You see, people tend to complicate human evolution. It's actually very simple. If you simply go back 3.5 billion years, you arrive at single cell organisms. This is where we all came from. Now, fast forward a billion years and multicellularity evolves into fungi, plants, animals. Then the first animals to develop a backbone were fish. Then over the course of billions of years, fish evolve into all kinds of animals, mammals, reptiles, birds. Then in the animal line, we see the evolution of our ape-like ancestors, such as Artie and Lucy. Then humans arise from these ancestors. Why are you guys watching this? It's so boring. You get to pick next time, Emma. We do see today that it is an indisputable fact that we share a common ancestor with them. Is that true, Dad? What, Parker? Did we used to be fish? I mean, did we come from slimy goo and turn to monkeys? Yeah, I, I guess that's true. You can't change the past. Sweetheart, even your science textbook makes it clear. Humans evolved over millions of years. In John 1, we see that Jesus was present with the Father, creating all things in Genesis. In Matthew 19, Jesus taught from Genesis when he said that man and woman were created at the beginning of creation, not millions of years afterwards. Let's consider what Jesus said in the parable of the sower. Jesus said that the word of God is like a seed that can grow in our hearts and produce fruit if they develop roots and grow to maturity. But when that seed is cast by the wayside, birds will come and devour those seeds before they sprout roots. This guy said that, I kid you not, I literally thought we were gonna have to call it construction. This is a job. Okay, I was like, oh, you should have seen your face. Oh man, I've never seen somebody look so shocked. <laughs> because it was shocking. Yeah. Hey guys, so what's the big occasion? Well, yes, what I'm, is the occasion? I'm glad you asked. You mm -hmm. see my strapping young friend here, just got a promotion and a pay raise, which you. means Ch change. Uh, uh. All right, all right, drinks on me. Yes, yes. that's what we like all to right. hear. There you go. I'll, yeah. yeah, I'll get a beer. And what about you? What do we have on tap? What are we working with? You know what? I'm feeling fruity tonight. Let's go with the woodchuck. Fruity. Yep, Which, uh, you heard it. Congrats on the promotion. Thanks. Um, so you already have a drink. Can I get you anything else? Can get a menu. your signature. Yeah, well, what's the rush? I'm just giving you what you want. Isn't this what you want? What I want? Are you kidding me? Now you're asking me what I want? There's no one we can contact for you. We have a chaplain that can come by if, if you'd like to To talk. what? Tell me what it's gonna be like to die. <laughs> to tell me some fairy tale about heaven, do you think that'll make me feel better? None of that will keep me alive. 
I'm gonna die. I'm gonna cease to exist. I understand, sir. My name is Parker. Parker. I understand, Parker. We're just doing all that we can to make you as comfortable as possible. You don't understand. <laughs> you can't make me comfortable. Do you think it's comfortable to die? Look at me. I'm in constant pain. I have no family around me. And pretty soon I'll have no future. It's not possible for you to make me feel comfortable. I don't want to die. Please, I don't want to die. Life is a vapor. Before we know it, our time on this earth will come to an end. And all we're left with is a series of choices that lead to the outcome of our lives. And whether we receive Christ determines where we will spend eternity. And for those who receive Christ, believing in God's word and living it out plays out in more significant ways than we will ever know. You see, what we believe about origins, the Bible, and God has a deciding impact on how our lives turn out. How would this life have been different with a different worldview? Are you guys watching this? Is that true, Dad? The story of humanity. Uh, what, Parker? Did we used to be fish? When the human lineage broke away from that of chimpanzees. Over time, uh, <laughs> I don't know, son. Um, the evidence that we descended from apes is pretty overwhelming. But my Sunday school teacher said God created everything, like in Genesis. Yeah, that's possible. Sure, it's possible. I mean, God could have directed the process of evolution over the course of millions of years. I mean, he's God, he can do whatever he wants, but who knows how historical the Bible actually is. Like God creating everything in six days or the earth being only thousands of years old. Well, we know that's not true. I mean, science tells us that the earth is millions of years old and humans have evolved over time. Besides, buddy, Genesis might just be a fairy tale. You know, the Bible's a, a great book with great lessons, but it was written by a bunch of random men thousands of years ago. So it's, well, it's difficult to determine which parts are historical and which parts are just made up. In John 1, we see that Jesus was present with the Father, creating all things in Genesis. In Matthew 19, Jesus taught from Genesis when he said that man and woman were created at the beginning of creation, not millions of years afterwards. Let's consider what Jesus said in the parable of the sower. Jesus said that the word of God is like a seed that can grow in our hearts and produce fruit if they develop roots and grow to maturity. But when that seed is cast by the wayside, oh, you should have seen your face. Oh man, I've never seen somebody look so. <laughs> hey guys, so what's the big occasion? Well. Yes, what is the occasion? You know, I'm glad you asked. Tell us. See, I have a friend who's about yay high, yay big, mm -hmm. who happens to have just gotten a promotion <laughs> and a pay raise, mm -hmm. which yeah. means... Cha-ching. Huh? Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got the promotion. I haven't got the paycheck yet. Oh, oh come on. Okay. You guys are on your own. Sure. Okay. That's how it's going. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'll get up here. My best.
best friend. I have to be there. Oh, please. Since when have you and Michelle been best friends? Okay, stop it. Girls, you just need to stop fighting. Mom, this is so unfair. I need the car tonight. I know. But you promised you'd take me to Michelle's party. Yes, but I haven't spoken to your father Oh, yet. great. And once that happens, I'm going to get gypped again. Well, what is that supposed to mean? You always take her side. Okay. Okay. Iris, I don't appreciate your tone. And girls, we only have two cars. I am not getting dropped off at Brad's house. It's one party. Yeah. Let it go. It's one party. It's one party. I already had this plan before you had this plan. Shut up! That's enough! Can't you guys see I'm trying to get this report done? Now show your mother some respect and do what she says! Come on, girls. We'll get this worked out. I just praise God that he changed your life. Just think about what you have to look forward to. No more suffering. You'll finally be home. With the Lord. Why do I feel such shame and guilt? I have so many regrets. So much time wasted. So many things I wish I could change. I'm so sorry that I wasn't the godly man that you deserved. You are a great and godly man. It was staring me in the face the whole time. If only I'd lived my life if only this isn't just some book it's the key to life however most disregard it or consider it a myth and no matter how hard parents try to raise their kids to live the right way, every person makes their own choices in life. Choices built on a foundation that impacts how they live. Is that true, Dad? Uh, what, Parker? Did we used to be fish? When the human lineage broke away from that of chimpanzees. Over time, no, son. No. Um, unfortunately, many people have been deceived into believing a lie. But your mom and I, we believe what the Bible says about creation. But how do you know that the Bible is true? These scientists, uh, they talk about the overwhelming evidence uh, for evolution. I believe that their evidence is actually proof that a higher being created everything to work together perfectly. And that same God that created everything, he's revealed himself to us in the Bible. It's not just a few parts of the Bible that are true. It actually starts on the first page and it gives us a solid foundation to build our lives on. In fact, Jesus said, he said, if you believe God's word and you build your life on it, you can withstand anything that comes your way. Your dad is right. We can trust what the Bible says. Remember just the other day we were talking about how God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own hand. He said that he created for six days and then rested on the seventh, which is why we live in a similar way, working for six, resting for one. And none of the other Ten Commandments are fake or made up. And he certainly didn't want us working for thousands of years before taking a break. <laughs> How is God's word going to grow in our hearts if our minds do not believe what it says about creation, about Christ? You see, Paul's plea to the Corinthians is simple. 
Examine yourselves. He's not saying that you can lose your salvation. He's not saying that you have to work harder at staying redeemed, no. He's asking them, and by extension, asking us to examine our hearts. Are we truly in the faith? Does the Holy Spirit reside in our lives? Has the Word of God taken root in your life? If so, it will grow and produce much fruit. If so, there will be evidence of that life. You gotta be kidding me. Man, come on. You do realize it's not every day your boy gets a big promotion, right? Are you missing the party? Come on! Before too long, we'll be working for this guy and we all to hang anymore. Sorry, guys. I told Sarah I wouldn't stay out late. Oh, She's not feeling well either. Every time. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you have fun with that. We'll be here living the dream. See you, boys. Going so soon? Your friends will be lonely. No, they're the life of the party. I think I'd just get in the way. They're gonna have a good time. Well, maybe you could keep me company then. But the people he hangs out with are always getting in trouble. Yeah, but... Okay, listen. Claire has a point, okay? Let's listen to her. And what does Proverbs say? Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools. Get in trouble. Get in trouble. Hey, babe, can you come here? What's up? this. Well, the insurance company doesn't think so. Oh, I hate this disease. What? Oh. Well, oh God, just get rid of it. Honey, it's gonna be okay. Look at me. Look at me. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Honey, have we ever missed a bill? or payment of any kind. The Lord will oh. provide. have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. Life well lived, a legacy passed on. If it were as easy as believing creation, and your life will turn out great. Everyone would believe, but it's not that simple. It requires submission, 
It requires faith when life doesn't make sense. And without faith, the disbelief, the doubts in our mind would prevent the Word of God from impacting the choices that we make. As I said, life its a series of choices built on a foundation. The only question is, what is your life founded upon? Hi, I'm Brett Varvel, the Director of Foundations. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of everyone at Genesis Apologetics, we'd like to leave you with this final thought. You see, we all have a choice on how to build our lives. Even as Christians, we sometimes fail to build parts of our lives on God's Word. Rather, we adopt the perspectives of the world and make the choices that follow. A great starting place for building our lives and beliefs is where the Bible begins in Genesis. Here we find an all-powerful God who spoke creation into existence, the first two humans created in His image, our role to be stewards over the earth, and God's idea about marriage. It's here we also learn about the consequence of sin, including death, suffering, and disease. In fact, we don't even get past the third chapter of Genesis before we find our eternal problem, being separated from God by our sin, and God's solution to provide a future Savior who would come to save us from the judgment that we deserve. The late Henry Morris III put it this way, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ encompasses this entire threefold work of Christ. The creation of all things, the conservation of this present world, and the consummation of the universe to his perfection. Past, present, future. Neglect the creation, there is no foundation or standard or ability. Neglect the cross, there is no power or authority or justice. Neglect the consummation, there is no hope or joy or victory. If you're not yet a Christian, we hope you would consider receiving Christ, trusting Him to forgive your sins, and begin a new life that includes the promise of eternal hope. If you've already received Christ, we encourage you to deepen your trust in God's Word, even by going back to the beginning.